Welcome to Arizona Real Estate News. And the studio lights are so bright that Jackie and Ruby had to put on shades. That's right. We're incognito. Okay. Shh, don't tell so anybody. You're, you're not really here. Well, we're not here. Well, welcome. Pat is here. And uh, we are ready to roll. And we want to announce that today, going forward here, we finally have a show sponsor. We have the Red Hog Media is sponsoring our show. And if you're a real estate agent, you're looking for real estate videos and photography and drone shots, I highly recommend it. But they also do business videos. So if you're a business and you need to showcase your business, highly recommend Red Hog Media. And their link is below in the description. And when you contact them, let them know the code word Rick helps and you will get 10% off. How cool is that? Yeah, that's Ooh. awesome. Should be, should be a lot of fun. So here's my seven day moving average. I put some arrows in there for illustration. I've got uh, um, Mother's Day, Memorial Day and 4th of July. And over here is labor day and we came up and went down started to go down just a little bit on contracts but we didn't go down as low as fourth of july and i thought we would uh but uh um fourth of july you know sales just tanked but then they came right back up but we haven't passed that line there of 28 2900 in a long long time and uh you for some reason new listings popped up here um, over the past few days, and now they're right back down. Rick, so, was that maybe this the three day people? Uh, End of could, the month, it, it could be. I, I mean, I didn't see a huge pop though in cancellations and then coming up, but it's just it's one of those numbers I just can't explain, so I'm ignoring it. Um, <laughs> in the <laughs> Crawford, good idea, yeah, that's it's a good strategy, it's worked for me my whole life. Um, <laughs> and August had the maximum number of working days, 23, for title companies to close escrow. So it's like 15% more than July, right? Which only had 20 days. So they're saying all things being created equal, they expected 15% more closings than July. What happened, we saw we went down 2.3%. So that shows you just how dismal August was when it came to sales. But we did have a couple of good weeks. Uh, you know, when rates kind of muddled down around the uh, 5.1. But you can see that the Crawford market index is leveling out and everything appears to be leveling out, even the price reductions. Hey, Rick. These are listing prices. So, yes. Is, isn't that typical, though, for the end of August starting? Well, no, because you're you're still comparing August to July oh, and August okay. to last August. Okay. The August numbers this year compared to last number are last August or even worse. August 22 had a 4.5% advantage over August 21, having 23 working days, 22, but closings dropped 38% year over year. Hmm. A new construction went up. So um, listing prices are continuing their decline, but not at a rapid scale like they did up here. They're starting to flatten out, but you can see the listing prices per square foot are now right there with 2021. So, so here's a question for you, Rick. Yeah. Um, the builders, for example, Lennar, they're doing 90 to $50,000 price drops. Are those going to be in your, would they account for anything in here if they've been listed in the MLS? It probably depends on how many they put on the MLS. Yeah. Um, I'm not seeing a lot. There are some builders I see there, uh, but I'm not. I think a lot of the price reductions, too, are still um, open door. They still have, I think it's 1,900 active listings, and they're selling 477 a month. So do the math. They're going to be doing this for another three, four months. So to yeah, get out and they, that inventory. They actually, open door actually had listings brand new home builds that I, I just came across over the last few days. I just took a client out to Lennar and um, looking at new builds, but I just came across uh, open door was listing brand new, new builds that. Whoa. That's yeah, interesting. So it was bizarre. I, I need to delve into it a little bit further and yeah. research why. Yeah. I'll why see if we can find builds. out about that. A, yeah. Um, I, so I will. Sounds, that is 
article Very here on home builder sentiment. And it <laughs> says incentives continue to grow with some communities pushing 20% in total discount packages. This is a Phoenix builder. The positive is that there's light at the end of the tunnel for improved building cycle times. The negative is there won't be customers on the other side of said tunnel. <laughs> yeah. So, so they admit they're discounting, but they're not seeing anybody there. Now, I got this email this morning from, um, who are these guys? Uh, what builder is this? Pulte Homes. They're advertising these great price reductions. And here they went from uh, 830 to 813 but check this one out. They went down four hundred and forty-five dollars. So I'm going to rush right out there. It went oh from seven ninety-seven to seven ninety-six. Um, but they're touting that they're offering a lot of uh, financing buy down. So it's uh, an interesting little uh, turn of events going on in that in that market. And Mr. Pat, what the heck's going on with rates? It looks to me like they've already built in the upcoming seventy-five point increase i hope i think so i mean i i mean you see right here can you see my the chart uh, yeah uh basically we got from beginning of august to the beginning of september i mean we're just seeing this this is the price once again i'll, I'll flip this around here um give me one second here you know me and my prices but this there has been the run-up in rates obviously from august to september we're seeing a top here i mean i you know they're saying three three point five we had a, we had kind of a bad day yesterday or uh not the day before yesterday so yeah i mean i think we're, we're so, we saw this before the last time the feds meant that uh you know there was a run-up in rates and then they they subsided i think um you know there's there's one service that i subscribe to that basically says since the run-up in rates, there's no need to lock now. Um, he goes, that's been built in. So I, I think, uh, you know, the European Central Bank, they raised their rates 75 bips last night. And actually, as you can see, today's market in the Treasury, the 4.5 coupon was only down 11. Um, it was up 2 bips in price, or in rate, excuse me, 3.28. The high was 3.30. So, you know, I mean, there's... I heard and read that there's a leak. <laughs> there's some guy that's, you know, they they leaked this information too, so he kind of softens the blow of the Fed news. Well, um, does anybody think they're going to go up 100 basis points? I haven't seen that at all. No, I have not seen that at all. I think they're going to. I mean, <laughs> this is just Pat McMaster's in Chandler, Arizona, but um, <laughs> um, you know. But I, <laughs> you're all we I got. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I said, you're all we got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, hey, I tell you what, I'll I'll take my word over. If, you know, <laughs> some of these some of these experts are so-called experts. I mean, I've seen their calls and they're they're not that good. I mean, look at the <laughs> you get the Federal Reserve. Obviously, you and I have been ta laughing about this the last couple, you know, last year and a half about calling transitory. You and I were sitting on our little two-man podcast last year saying, now uh, inflation is not transitory," and sure enough, as hell, it it was not transitory. So. Um, I'll take my word just as good as federal Powell. Um, but I mean, uh, you know, I just think that they're, they know they're behind the curve. They're going to probably step up three quarters of a point now, and then probably another three quarters of a point. And then, you know, there's one federal reserve chairman, uh, Mester muster. I don't know she was saying that they're going to, you know, create this pain. And obviously Powell said about the pain. Now they're trying, you know, it's kind of like, I think they got, just thought about this. They got beaten up the last year and a half. Now they're trying to be the tough guy. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I get uh, that. And, and, and I, I spoke a little bit last week. I, I think there's a real disconnect between how much they're trying to tighten and how much the administration is spending. It's like, you know, yeah. it's like it's like being married and saying, okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna hang on this money here, but yep. the spouse goes out and runs up a credit card at Nordstrom. So I mean. That's what's going on. And you're seeing That's, the administration start to beat up the Fed a little bit about all the pain talk. So there's a battle going on here. And I think it's yeah. pissing off Chairman Powell. And he's just yeah, going to stand I, his ground. I think so. I mean, I, I told you, that's a great analogy as far as, uh, you know, you got the married <laughs> couple, one spending and one wants to save. And it's just like, uh, it, it's it's really, they're not working hand in hand. I mean, no. which is obviously frustrating the, 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 
the markets. Um, I think the markets um, are going to certainly work with Powell or trust Powell more than uh, the administration because it's all the administration just making it political. And he's like, now I guess I think the feds are trying to act like to put their tough guy muscles on and say, okay, we're not, we're going to create pain and we're going to do this. Um, and I think that's, I think once again, they're going to step on it here and then step on at the next meeting and then let, you know, let's sit there for a bit. And, um, you know, you've got, uh, I mean, right now you've got on my end, you've got lock volume down uh year to date, 53%. I mean, it's, uh, you know, refis are down 90 or no, 80, 85%. So everything's slowing down on the mortgage side. You've got lenders, obviously it's kind of interesting on our side, you got wholesale, wholesale and retail lenders, you know, some of them do both and <laughs> they're saying, Oh, we're getting out of wholesale, but they just don't want to admit that they're everything's slowing down. So um, I think uh, Powell's trying to tap down, you know, home prices, you know, that's his, this is his way of, you know, obviously keeping rates elevated, but you know, people say, Oh, there's gonna be a crash, but back in June and July, there was over $27 trillion of home equity. So if we lose, you know, 10%, that's 2.7, $3 trillion. There's still a lot of equity out there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's hard to, it's hard to look at the crash, but it's very easy and very welcome to look at an adjustment. And uh, Jackie and Ruby, what are your, uh, clients telling you are you having problems getting any price adjustments out there and are uh, people still plugging away or are they backing off well we've been kind of working two different sides so i've been working more toward gearing toward the listings we have an investor that's um he's been running some marketing ads and sending us quite a few leads for people interested in selling um some of them are very realistic they understand what's happening with the market and some of them aren't. We just took another new listing. We got word this morning that we're getting it uh, out in Buckeye, which, you know, we had a conversation. We took the whole Crumford, Mac, uh, Crumford Market Report with us, left the entire presentation, yeah. the last one Buckeye that Tina tough. just did. And I'm like, Buckeye is the worst, the slowest. It is definitely a buyer's market. So um, this person was listed with the three-day people prior and not much happened. They started out at 400 and then they raised it to 410 in July, which made no sense whatsoever. So we're coming in starting at 399. So I think he's being somewhat realistic and um, hopefully we'll get some activity on that. But I, I think our sellers are starting to realize that we've got to be aggressive. We, we you know, unfortunately, it's the buyer pool is shrunk and you've You've got to price appropriately. Ruby's been working more with the buy side, so I'll let her talk about that. Well, I don't know that I'm working more with the buy side. I've got my listings too, and one of my sellers literally just said yesterday that this property is starting to be just a money pit, and he inherited it from his dad who passed. So we've, you know, tried to get it sold at a realistic price, but it's a two bedroom, two bath. It's just, you know, it's a tough sale for, um, you know, just this time of year anyway. Um, and then the buyers, uh, you know, just, I've got several buyers out there going out to Lennar, they're offering um, Cobrokes again, um, special financing to bring down the buyer's interest rate. So that's huge. Um, I think the one I got under contract yesterday was 10,000 towards buying down the interest rate or the closing cost, however it needed to be used. So, well, yeah, I'm just, seeing, I'm seeing listings that use the verbiage priced below comps. And I just had to think, well, you better be. <laughs> Which comps are you using? Yeah. That's the question. Are you two weeks you know, ago comps or right. one month ago? <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you, you better if you're priced at comps like a, the three month average that people tend to use, then you're way off. I, you know, so when so. we're meeting with clients, we're actually telling them forget the sold comps. Let's just completely. I, I'm I'm printing a few back to July first, but let's take them off the table. We need to look at what's active, under contract, and pending and base our, our pricing off that, just totally take the sold comps off the table. And it's yeah, a bummer, honestly, it's a real bummer. I, I know Rick, you probably experienced it too, but as realtors, we don't want to have to be 
doing price reductions for our sellers at any point. But I mean, that's just where we're at right now. That's where the market's at. But I think well, you have to give people, I think you have to give people a realistic, I mean, you can't always be, you know, you know, rosy and dark chocolates and champagne. <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta lay it down on the line. I mean, um, I think people, you know, people are realistic. People are smart. They realize that the market doesn't go up, 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 up. And, you know, you have to just give them the, you know, you know bad, not bad news, but just realistic news. Right. That's yeah. what they, that's what they pay a, professionals for. We have and a rep reputation of just wanting to hold prices up. Even on the water video that I had, uh, somebody yeah. made the comment, you realtors just don't want prices to come down. That's why you're lying about the water shortage. I look at oh that my goal. lord! I don't remember lying about the water shortage. I was just <laughs> saying, here's what you know. So, but I have another one coming out on Sunday that I think you'll really like. But we have a reputation of we're only happy if prices continue to go up because we make more commission. When in reality, when the prices were going up, the commissions were cut. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So that wasn't and necessarily it, the case. <laughs> and that was not a fun market for anybody. Nobody likes to have buyers be so disappointed and beat out and beat out and beat out and put, you know, their best offers forward and come in 10, 20, 30,000 above list price to be beat out by an institutional buyer. I mean, that was not fun at all. It was heartbreaking. I mean, you know, you would have some clients, you'd write 15, 20 offers for them. And then they just throw their hands up and, and say, I can't take this anymore. That was horrible. Well, yeah. and Jackie, you, you know, Pat sent this article day and you were alluding to it last week, the Blackstone's exit from single family buying signal signals, easing competition for homes. So there there's an institutional buyer that says we're out, we're back. But wait, but wait, you got to understand <laughs> there is more. And I am going to do a video on this that, that so the part that's out is home partners of america which they yeah. bought i believe earlier in the year or last year i don't remember exactly when they bought them and i'm actually certified as a home partners of america agent um and it was it's a great program but it has it only works in an escalating market there so basically what happens is they take a buyer that is unable to qualify right now they give them up to five years to purchase the house they were escalating it, I believe, at 5% a year. So they would be a cash buyer. They would allow them um, to lease a property up to five years and their earnest deposit would go toward the purchase price. And um, it, it was a great program for people that were close to qualifying, but weren't mm -hmm. quite there. Well, if, mm -hmm. if we don't know where the market is and they pulled out of 38 cities, Phoenix is not one of them. Tucson was one of them. Oh, they just, it only works in an escalating market. And I think they realize we're in a stagnant market. Blackstone's still buying. They are still buying, but they're shutting down some of the home partner programs. And they did that last year too, for a period of time. So it's home partners did that before they merged. So it's not like this is something new. Home partners is, you know, emerged, pulled back, emerged, pulled back before. So I think they're just kind of, waiting to see what happens. And like I said, it only works in an escalating market. Yeah. Well, Ruby, you said you got a contract on a new build. Can I ask you what kind of earnest money did they require? 15,000. Oh, wow. Yeah. 15,000. Yeah. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was 10. It's 10,000. <clears> the sales that, price 400 and um, 2499. Uh, that can nine. go up after a trip to the design center though, right? Well, it's actually um, an inventory home that is scheduled to be done the end of October. Okay. So everything's already set. A lot of these builders I'm finding are just doing, um, I'm going to call, it, they're just like in spec process, inventory homes. Like they're just already, this is what you get. This is standard. You, there's no design centers. They're taking away the design center. So uh, most of them, you just, you get these options and that's it. So, so is that a result of people backing out of the contracts and now they got the home available? No, it's, it's just, um, for example, they're, they're, it's kind of like affordable housing, <laughs> but not oh. really affordable for most people. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, yeah, Starlight Homes, Lennar, they, they've got certain models in certain communities that they're, um, just doing specific things. So this one's actually at the end of, um, out at the end of Litchfield Park West, just the very west side of Litch Litchfield Park by Verado. 
So it's a great area. Yeah, that is nice out there. So yeah. I, uh, um, well, this week, Pat, when is the Fed meeting? Uh, Jerry and I are getting together February 20th and 21st. Are you, is, is he coming <laughs> over to your place? <laughs> I'm gonna go out and see him this last. He came over last time. I'm gonna go see him. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go see him this time. It's kind of like a back and forth, you know. I go there, he comes here, you know. So the 20th and 21st. Well, so he's probably not gonna come back because you served him. Well, a he usually he doesn't come out here during the during the uh, during the summer. He uh, he likes huh? me to go back there in Washington. <laughs> okay, well that that makes that makes sense. I mean, you've been so, flying all over the place anyway, so <laughs> and uh, and it, it also could be that you served him a warm beer and a crappy hot dog, so he's gonna. Be <laughs> That's so, exactly right. But no, I, I know seven, that from experience. So. 20th and 21st, Tuesday, Wednesday. But I think, you know, I said that, that staircase climb up in rates, I think we're going to see it. I mean, I, my crystal ball was broken, but I think we're going to see it back off a little bit. I mean, you know, it's built in already. So, but uh, that, you know. That, yeah, if they don't go up 75 points, the stock market's going to revolt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That'll just, it'll just, it'll just tank. They'll go. Yep. You know, you're, you're speaking out of both sides of your mouth. You're, you're not going clamping down as tight as we'd like you to. Yeah. And they're just going to, that's just my little, you know, Rick thought. So <laughs> oh, I think you're hundred percent right. So we'll see what happens. Well, it's going to be a, a kind of a quiet week uh, as we get out the, out the next week. So not much earth shattering. I do want to see how much, if all we dig out of the Labor Day dip that we have in that chart. Uh, Cause it's the gap between the number of homes that we have on the market and the number that are selling that is not really climbing. It's about 1,400. So the price reductions are starting to tail off a little bit in, in, in with the exception of, you know, open door and stuff. So I think pricing pressure is starting to ease off just a hair, but any further uptick in interest rates and all bets are off the table as far as I'm concerned. So I think it's just going to be a very stagnant market for the rest yeah, of the year. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm seeing a lot of open house signs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Haven't seen those in a while. Everybody. Well, thanks for joining me. We will check back with you next week. Take care. Have a good one. Bye. Talk to you. Bye. Later. Bye.